Okay, so just sit yourself on your lift, have a little wriggle about, just feel that you're sitting evenly. Just take a few moments just to establish yourself on your mat. So feel that the seat bones are level, hold onto your knees and then lift and open the chest, drawing your shoulders down away from your ears. So it's often that juxtaposition between lifting the spine and then drawing your shoulders down that really gives you this intense stretch of the neck and of the spine. So just bring yourself into levelness. Soften your jaw, soften your tongue, soften your throat. Just listen to the sound of the breath as it enters and as it exits. Just look down at the floor, look at something that's not moving. So that the eyes become still in the sockets and draw your attention in towards your breath and towards the mechanics of the inhalation and the relaxation of the exhalation. And then bring your hand into Namaste, press your palms firmly together. Just gently lengthen from the armpits into the elbows. From the elbows into the heels of the hands, from the heels of the hands into the fingertips. And then allow your eyes to gently close. So just listening to the sound of the breath as it enters and as it exits. Observing the rise and the fall of the chest as you inhale and exhale. You're drawing in the energizing ingredients of the cosmos with the in breath percolating into the cells of the lungs, percolating into the blood, pumping that oxygenated blood around the body. To bring mental sharpness and physical attentiveness. Maybe every now and then just hold on to the in-breath just for a brief moment or two, just to allow the energy of that breath to percolate into the blood. Drawing in more energy from the inhalation and allowing it to distribute around the body. And then breathing normally again, draw your chin down to meet your chest. 
spend a moment to seek to generate a genuine heartfelt sense of gratitude for something or someone or somewhere Hold on to that feeling of abundance in the heart area. And then release the backs of your hands down towards your knees, palms facing upwards. And as you raise your head, just very gently allow your eyes to softly open. Hold on to your knees, lift and open your chest again lifting the spine but drawing your shoulders down away from your ears to lengthen the neck lift up into the chest and then turn to the right side drawing your abdomen across your ribs across your shoulders across And then come back to the centre, hold on to your knees, lift and open the chest. Take a consciously deep inhalation and then turn, turn with the exhalation. Keeping the jaw soft, keeping the tongue soft and the throat soft. and then come back to the center. Staying on your lift, bring your feet into Baddha Konasana. So the soles of the feet press together, the heels press together, the outer edge of the foot presses together, and then hold onto your knees. Pull against your knees so that you can lift the spine, again, drawing your shoulders down away from your ears, and then gently just come forwards a little so you start to open up the front of the hip so as you come forwards elevating the chest upwards keeping the seat bones down firmly on the lift press the feet together lift and open the chest so you give the front of the hip an opening action and then just come back to the center, just hold onto your knees, lift and open your chest, drawing your shoulders down. Just take an inhalation and then just come forwards one more time, keeping the feet pressing firmly together, especially the heels, lifting the front chest, extending the spine away, holding onto the knees and then see if you can bring your hands forwards lifting and opening the chest drawing your knees down towards the floor and forwards a little more keeping the seat bones down lifting and opening the chest keeping if there's kind of discomfort in the ankles then push the heels more firmly together especially the inner heel and then Bring yourself back, sit yourself in Vadakanasana with the heels together, holding onto your knees, lifting and opening your chest. And then draw your knees back together and then come onto your knees, move the block and then sit yourself down onto your heels just feel the openness of the um, of the hips as you wriggle about so just have a little wriggle into your inner heels try and draw the outer buttock flesh down into the inner heels 
press the shin bone into the shin skin so that the shin skin makes contact with the mat so that the thighs the thigh bones become activated the thigh muscles become activated lift up into the chest and then hinging entirely at the hips keeping the back straight stretch your arms forward spread in the fingers spread in the palms and then bring your head down into Adha Mukha Virasana. Just breathing evenly and deeply, aiming to keep the seat bones down onto your heels. So turning the tailbone and the sacro sacrum spine down to the heels, lengthening into the arms. Lift the head and then slide your left arm underneath the left of the right armpit and then draw your left shoulder down onto the floor. Let your head rest down onto the floor and then press in that left arm really firmly into the floor especially into the hand roll the chest down to face the floor so that you open up the in the shoulder blade region so the seat bones might not be on the heels at this stage but still try and activate that adamuka virasana keeping the seat bones down stretching the heels uh i'm sorry stretching the arm away that lifted arm And then lift, stretch back into Adamuka Virasana, make good contact with the seat bones and the heels if you can. And lengthen the arms. Lift the head, slide the right arm underneath the left arm pit, and then draw that right shoulder down onto the floor. Let your head come down onto the floor. Keep that left arm really active. Extending into Adamuka Virasana, try and sit back down on the heel and then press that right hand really firmly into the floor so that you start to open the inner shoulder blade region, drawing the chest down to face the floor. So rolling the chest down to face the floor a bit more. Keeping the right arm really actively pushing into the floor. So that you really open up in the shoulder blade region. And then stretch your arms, correct your, your Adamuka Virasana, see if you can stay down on your heels. And then just release your arms to the sides of the body in child's pose. So if this becomes heavy on your head, just lengthen from the shoulders into the fingertips, consciously extending into the arms. And stretch out your arms, come up into onto all fours, turn your toes as wide apart as the mat, and then come up into dog down. Just observe the pose. So it's the if you haven't done any yoga over the weekend, maybe it's a good gauge for how your body is feeling. So we come back into into dog down every time because it's so familiar and we can observe any differences in that familiarity. Push the kneecaps through to the backs of the knees, turn the fronts of the thighs inwards, turn the backs of the thighs outwards, lift the seat bones away from the backs of the thighs. Keep your hands where they are, keep your feet where they are, and then swing the hips forwards into dog up. Push firmly into the heels, lengthen the abdomen towards the diaphragm, towards the collarbone, towards the chin. 
So the more you work into the legs, the more you open the fronts of the hips, the more you open the front of the chest. And then come back up into dog down. And then one more time, swing the hips forward, coming to dog up again, pushing deeply into the heels. So you have to really open and lift the front chest, but resist that lift of the front chest with the heel. And then come back up into dog down. And then step your feet forwards, come up into a standing position. Bring your feet hip width apart, turning your toes in, making the outside edge of the foot line up with the outside edge of your mat. So be precise about the way that you place your feet spread your toes spread your fingers raise your arms up have your arms wide to start off with and then lift the chest up towards the ceiling like you're doing dog up again pushing the heels into the floor and then lifting the chest up to the ceiling and then hinge at the hips come forwards and then reach down and find the floor or if you can't find the floor find the blocks so we normally straight away come in onto the blocks but it's good sometimes to vary the way that we work but if your pose suddenly becomes like this then you need blocks to help you to straighten your legs and to lengthen the spine So push the kneecaps firmly into the sockets. Press the fronts of the thighs through to the backs of the thighs. Turn the fronts of the thighs inwards. Lift the seat bones away from the backs of the thighs. Extend the chin and the chest forward. Just breathing evenly and deeply reaching down getting hold of the backs of the heels if you can stay with the blocks or the hands on the floor if you can't and then draw the body in but keep the front of the chest long as you draw the body in, keeping the front of the chest long Breathing evenly and deeply. And then take hold of the big toe with the index finger and the middle finger underneath the big toe, the thumb around the outside of the big toe. And then again, project the chin and the chest forwards. Tie it in the kneecaps, turn the fronts of the thighs so that the backs of the thighs broaden. Lift the seat bones, project the chin and the chest forwards extend the spine away stamp the big toes into the floor and then try and rip them up like you're trying to rip a nail out of the floor and then keep in the front chest long bend your elbows out to the side drawing the body in towards the legs again padangatasana but with slightly wider feet Breathing evenly, deeply. Feeling that as you inhale, you draw in the energizing ingredients of the atmosphere and that percolates into the cells of the lungs. 
percolating through into the blood and that blood is pumped around the physical body just come back to our Futanasana bringing the hands onto the floor projecting the chin and the chest forward just breathing evenly and deeply and again with the hands sorry with the feet as wide apart as the mat slide your hand underneath the foot so the sole of the hand sorry the sole of the foot is in contact with the palm of the hand so you're standing on the back of your hand the palm of the hand is in contact with the sole of the foot and then project the chin and the chest forwards again reactivating the legs Adahastasana, lifting the seat bones, projecting the chin and the chest forwards, and then bending your elbows out to the side if you can, and drawing the body in. So there's a tremendous stretch at the backs of the calves. So if this is not attainable, then just go back to either half Uttanasana or Padanga Tasta, where you're holding on to the big toe. Okay, and then bring your hands down onto the floor. Bring the palms of the hands onto the floor. Lift from the wrists into the armpits. So you're a four-legged animal, lengthening down from the armpits into the wrists, lifting from the wrists up into the armpits. Breathing evenly, turning the fronts of the thighs inwards. That gives you space in the hips to lift the seat bones so that you can project the chin and the chest forward. Then walk your hands towards the end of your mat. Have your hands shoulder width apart. Then step your feet hip width apart. And breathe nice and evenly in through the nose and out through the nose turn the left toes in and then step the right foot forwards between the two hands and then straighten that front leg that right leg and then come into trikonasana Turning the chest to face the ceiling. Activating the legs. Lifting from the feet into the hips, into the chest, into the arms. Turning the chest up to face the ceiling. And then bring the top hand down. Bring both hands either side of that right foot. Turn the left foot out and then step back into dog down. Just feel the length of the legs. Maybe they don't feel quite so even. Maybe they do. Try and even them out, making the less enthusiastic leg follow the more enthusiastic leg. Turn the right toes in and then step forwards with the left foot, bringing the left foot between the two hands, bringing the left hand onto the shin, turning the chest and then coming back up into Trikonasana. So working from the feet up into the hips, up into the chest. Just breathing nice and evenly nice and deeply listening to the sound of the breath as it goes and then bring the top hand down bend that front leg if you need to bring it, both hands either side of that left foot and then step yourself back into dog down
breathing evenly feeling how perhaps the feeling of the legs has evened out a little maybe not maybe it has just observe it turn your left toes in and then step that right foot between the two hands and then this time walk the hands into the center of the two legs so you come into um, prasarita padottanasana so stepping that right foot forward and then swinging the hips to face the front and then into prasarita padottanasana lengthening from the feet into the hips up into the chest breathing evenly and deeply soft in the jaw and in the tongue lifting the seat bones up away from the heels projecting from the seat bones into the hips into the chest and then we're going to go back the opposite way around so your head is going to be in the opposite direction so turn your right toes in swap the left leg all the way out bring the hands either side of the left foot and then step back into dog down so you should be facing the other way around just breathing evenly and then come down onto your knees sit back on your heels and then just stretch forwards into Adamuka Virasana so although kind of moving in and out of dog down is kind of a typical practice it's really nice sometimes to just get that kind of flow moving into the practice finding that sequence using dog down as the central pose and then sit back on your heels and then come into cross legs so it's coming to cross legs to start off with just hold on to your knees and then lift and open the chest just observe your energy observe your breath hold on to the knees if you've got a bad back then just stay at this stage otherwise lengthen the front chest upwards as you come forward lengthening that front chest and then come forward try to keep the seat bones down on the heels that didn't make sense your heels aren't anywhere near the seat bones try and keep the seat bones down on the floor keep the front chest lifted and then walk yourself back to the center I'm just sitting back up again and then swap the crossing of your legs so swapping the crossing of the legs just extend the spine upwards feel how the seat bones make good contact with the floor at this stage and then again come forwards keep in the front chest lifted as soon as you start to drop in the front chest you lose the extension so keep this front chest elevating as you come forward so have your arms quite nice what and wide apart and then lengthen the front chest forwards keeping the seat bones down on the heels
breathing softly and deeply listening to the sound of the breath feeling the difference in the legs as you stretch forwards when you cross your legs in the wrong position and then gently bring yourself back into a seated Position, lift and open chest, drive the spine upwards. And then bring your legs out wide. Upa Vista Kanasana. To bring the legs as wide apart as they will go. Sit on a blanket if you kind of sink in the chest. So sit yourself up, Tur activate the legs, so tighten the kneecaps, lift the thigh muscles turning those thighs inwards as though you're doing tadasana just hold on to your knees for a moment lift and open the chest drive the spine upwards and then keep the front chest lifted slide your hands down to your shins keeping that front chest lifted Coming all the way down if you can, but just stay or whatever level is good for you. And then see if you can get hold of the big toes, keeping that front chest lifted and long as you stretch forward. And then release the toes. And then come back to the center. Just hold on to the knees and then bring feet inwards hold on to your knees lift and open your chest Just breathing evenly lifting the chest and then bring the legs back into either half padmasana or just cross legs Hold on to your knees. Lift the chin up towards the ceiling. And then turn to the right side. And then come back, lift and open the chest, drive your spine upwards, take a good deep inhalation and then turn to the left. and then come back to the center. Good, so rather than full Rajaka Patasana, we're gonna do um, a yin version of Rajaka Patasana. So we're kind of gonna come down onto our front so you can um, put something on a little warmer if you need to. Just come down onto your front and then just um, come onto your elbows to start off with. So we're going to just, um, so this is, as this sometimes is called half frog. So you're just going to stay on your elbows for a moment, lift and open the chest and then extend into the toes. But then we're going to kind of make this become more gentle. So you're going to bring your right knee out to the side so that it comes out in line with your hip. And then create a little pillow with your two hands. So bring the elbows out wide. Rest your head or in the same direction as your knee. And then just rest down into the floor. 
So at first, this feels extremely gentle. And that's probably because it is. But this knee that's out to the side, we start to open up that inner groin region. So this is a good alternative to Rajaka Patasana. It opens up the pelvic region. Some of the poses we have done have been fairly intense. So this is a good opportunity to just let the body rest. So I aim to keep the pose soft. We're not looking to extend, we're just looking to release. So you're resting your head on one side, chin in the same direction as the knee, as the bent knee. So in a moment, we're going to just bring that leg back in and I want you to really observe the feeling in the hip as you bring it down, as you bring it straight. So just gently straighten that right leg, just rest on your chin, rest your chin on your, on the backs of your hands. Just observe the opening of that pelvic region and then bring the left leg out so that the knee is in line with the hip and then rest your head on the opposite side on the other side to what you did last time so resting your chin in line with your bent knee or in the same direction as your what with your bent knee Keep the breath deep and consciously engaged in the pose.
If it feels uncomfortable, to have your head on the side, just rest your forehead on the backs of your hands. And then lift your head, just bring your legs back, just straighten your legs out. Rest your head, your forehead on your back of your hands for a moment. Just feel the openness of the fronts of the hips. And then lengthen out your legs. Stretch from the hips into the toes, point in the toes. Bring your hands either side of the chest, press the pelvis into the floor, and then lift the front chest upwards, bending, keeping your elbows bent if need be, keeping the pelvis down on the floor, lifting up into the front chest. So, Bhujangasana, the cobra. And then come down, just rest your forehead, <coughs> excuse me, on the mat. And then bend your knees, sit back on your heels, stretch forwards into Adamuka Virasana. And then sit back on your heels. Just come into cross legs for a moment. Just lift and open the chest. And then turn to your right side. And then come back to the centre, lift the chest, keep that chest lifted as you turn to the left. And then come back to the centre and then just stretch yourself out along your mat, come into Sutta. Vadakanasana, the soles of the feet are together, the knees are apart. Have a blanket from underneath your head, just to make the pose a little gentler. And then just stretch your arms out to the side. So just allowing gravity to open up. That inner groin just picking up from that yin opening action of the pelvis as you were laying in half frog. Breathing nice and evenly in through the nose and out through the nose. Every now and then holding on to the in-breath so that, that in-breath energy distributes around the body.
and then gently draw your knees together have your feet your knees together your feet apart for a moment just to rest out the spine and then straighten out your legs make sure you're in a really good straight line along the mat have the blanket underneath your head and the back of your neck and then just allow yourself to release completely into the floor as you allow your legs to become heavy your arms to become heavy your torso and your head to become heavy then your energy begins to emerge rising up to the top of the skin distribute that evenly with the breath down into the top tips of the fingers, the tips of the toes, the top of the head. And then when you're ready to disturb yourself, just wriggle your toes, wriggle your fingers, pull your knees in towards your chest. Just have a little rock from top to bottom, from side to side, just a grounding massage. And then gently roll yourself over onto your right side. And then straighten out the top leg, come back up into a seated position, just a final cross legs with your hands in the masti, just a final spinal lift. Draw your breath in through your nose down into the abdomen. Conscious of the energy that you have released through your practice this morning, that good, positive, healthy flow of clean energy that the extensions, the forward bends, the reclining poses and the twists bring to the body and to the mind. And then draw your chin down to meet your chest. Acknowledge the positive energy you've created inside. And then send some of that positive energy out into the world. And then when you're ready, just Gently draw the backs of your hands down onto your knees, palms facing upwards. And then as, you're, as you raise your head, allow your eyes to softly open and the focus to softly come back. Thank you very much. So hopefully you feel as though you have really kind of opened up your hips and that helps you to kind of release good positive energy for your day so thank you very much for joining me